everyone welcome back to my channel sorry if my voice is a little weird I'm kind of getting over a cold right now as you can tell by the title of this video this is gonna be my February wrap-up so let's jump into it the first book that I finished in February was Jane Unlimited by Kristen Kishore this book was not great so for starters I went into it thinking that it was going to be a sci-fi Jane Eyre retelling which sounded like it could be pretty hit or miss, and turns out it was a big miss for me. Um, part of it was because it's not just a Jane Eyre sci-fi retelling, like there were other classic works that were supposed to be um, kind of referenced in it as well, but it was just kind of confusing. The main character was really not likable. It's supposed to be kind of a mystery novel setup, but whenever something mysterious happens she just like wanders around the house and wastes page count with like pointless dialogue and there are five alternate endings and that's where like the sci-fi comes into play um but those i feel like the farther you get just the more the story falls apart it goes from like interdimensional art heists to she goes through a portal to a different world where like the family dog can talk it honestly, it just wasn't exciting. I didn't like any of it. Um, and another thing that I think needs to be said, one of the big character traits for the main character is that she ma hand makes umbrellas, which doesn't make any sense. So I really didn't like this book. The next book that I read was um, Seize the Day by Saul Bellow. This is um, an older work. It's a Nobel Prize winning piece of literature and it was kind of a nice change of pace given the book that I had read previous to this um, to get to read something that was like well written and had like literary like tools used in it but overall I mean it wasn't it wasn't like a great I mean I didn't love it it was fine but I didn't love it the next book that I read in February was Brave New World by Aldous Huxley um, this book I, overall I enjoyed and I'm glad that I read it. I think there were some parts that were definitely better or more well written than other parts, but I think it was, it was interesting. It held my attention. I read it, I think in a couple of hours, so it was okay. And the next book that I read was An Echo in the Bone by Diana Gabaldon. This is a part of the Outlander series and it took me, oh my God, a month to read this book. And I mean, She's thick, it's over a thousand pages, but still over a month. Partly it probably took me so long because I was reading other books like at the same time I was reading this one, but I was reading other books because, I mean, I feel like I would have slogged through this one for maybe the same length of time and would have really hurt like my goal for the year. Um, Diane, I think that um, Gabaldon's writing is just way too detailed. There are hundreds of pages that could have been cut out of this book that served no purpose to the plot or the characters. I think also in this book there are too many side characters and too many side plots going on. It's not very focused and it gets kind of confusing trying to keep track of all her characters. So I will probably be reading the next book in the Outlander series just because I have it, but I can't picture myself buying another Outlander book beyond that one. I'm just so over the series at this point. The next book that I read in February was The Daughters of Temperance Hobbs by Katherine Howe and I loved this book. Um, it's the sequel to my favorite book of all time, The Physic Book of Deliverance Dane, obviously same author. Um, and this sequel came out 10 years after that book came out and it's also like in this like the story is set 10 years after the previous one so it was really fun to get to see like familiar characters and familiar locations like 10 years in the future see how they were doing um, get to see them have another adventure and I just really liked it a lot I'm a little biased um, there was pretty much no way I was gonna be very critical of this work but I enjoyed it it's a good book the next book that I read in February was The Pluto Files by Neil deGrasse Tyson this I thought was a really fun book, um, especially if you're interested in like the controversy of is or isn't Pluto a planet, and also just some good general information about our solar system and the objects that are part of our solar system. 
Um, so this was fun, informative, quick read. If you're interested in more information about space that's easily accessible, this is a really good work. The next one I read was Mean Streak by Sandra Brown. Um, overall, I didn't really enjoy this book. I find this is the second Sandra Brown book that I've read and I find her dialogue to be very clunky, like nobody that I know talks like that. Um, just not good use of language in my opinion. The main character I also really didn't like. I felt like it was really weird to read a book written by a woman about a woman, but I still felt like the main character was being objectified by the story and the other characters in her story. So that was not a good time for me. Um, and towards the end of the book, honestly, there are too many plot twists. It got kind of confusing to keep up with like, who are the good characters? Who are the bad characters? Why are they good, good or bad characters? So I know that Sandra Brown is like a really popular thriller author, but I didn't really like this book. And I, since this is the second book that I've read by her and I didn't really like the first one either, I feel like I'm just not a fan of hers. But that was Mean Streak. Next, I read The Forbidden Garden by Ellen Herrick, which is the sequel to the book that I read um, a couple months ago, The Sparrow Sisters. And wow, I knew the sequel would probably be disappointing because The Sparrow Sisters in itself was pretty disappointing. But I cannot tell you how much I didn't care in this book about a garden that won't grow anything, a missing tapestry, one of the most lukewarm romances I've ever read. These characters had no chemistry. They had no reason to be together. It was just like, it's a man and a woman at the same place and they're relatively the same age and bleh, they have to date each other. They must be madly in love. So this was really not a good time. I'm just happy that it's out of the way, honestly. Next, I have *The Death of Mrs. Westaway*. *The Death of Mrs. Westaway* by Ruth Ware. This book I really liked. Um, it was spooky, fun. I don't think it was um, Ruth Ware's best twist, but overall, I really enjoyed the book. Enjoyed the vibes. I liked it. Next up, I have *It's Kind of a Funny Story* by Ned Vizzini. At when I first started reading this book, I didn't really think that I was going to get much out of it. It kind of felt like any other YA book about mental health. Um, but in the end, um, as I got farther along into it, I really started to enjoy it. I really started to enjoy the characters and his story. And I thought it was really interesting. Late, like As I was reading it, I like looked at the author and found out that he had actually been in a, um, like a psych facility for depression. So I thought it was interesting that he has like that patient perspective and like that's the perspective of this book and it was also neat to read as somebody who is a nurse and who has like been in psychiatric uh, like wards and facilities to get to see you know this perspective of it and also um, maybe how things have changed since this book came out in 2006 and the author was um, treated and hospitalized even before that so I think a lot of things have changed since then so overall this was interesting to read. And lastly I have True Colors by Kristen Hanna. I really enjoyed this book since I loved, loved The Great Alone by her so much. I was afraid that another book by her wouldn't, I was like, maybe it's, um, you know, another book by her won't be the same. And I will say this didn't like touch me personally as much as The Great Alone did, but it was still really good. I absolutely love her ability to make characters that are so complex and so believable and I love her exploration of complicated family dynamics um and I also really enjoy how her books can be or the two of the two that I've read are so dark and really can put characters through a lot of just difficult situations but she still gives them like they get a happy ending. It's maybe not the ending that like the most perfect ending, but it's a happy ending. Like you, I'm the way her books end leaves me satisfied. I'm happy for the characters. I feel like the story is tied up nicely. So that's really good. Really liked that. So those are all the books that I read in February. I 
partly had a really busy month. I think I mentioned this in my January video that my friend Brittany and I were kind of like challenging each other to read more books and um, for a while there we were like neck and neck one of us like each trying to one up the other on reading books so I really plowed through them this month. I'm kind of in a little bit of a slump right now but I'm okay with it because I am so wildly ahead for my 100 books of the year. I've already read like 22 and it's just now the beginning of March so I'm doing pretty well on that. Um, thanks everyone for watching. Catch you next time. Bye!